Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collective podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, Enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons, terrorize! Hello, welcome to TFYLP. Uh, we are doing a pre-record tonight, which will go up here in the next uh, couple weeks. Uh, I'm going to be taking a little bit of vacation here, so... Uh, trying to get some content out to the fans uh, on our normal weekly schedule. Um, so I am Lucas, and I am joined tonight by Christian. What up? From the past. Oh. What's down town? There, there you go. So tonight we are we are talking about um, just the the mid 2000s periods of transformers and that was kind of one of the i don't know quote unquote golden ages i would say of transformers fandom like we just had a lot of interest in the brand and a lot of different um you know things going on with the toy lines with uh the various movies and you know animation and all that type of thing uh, so I figured uh, we would talk about it, and I know that uh, certain someone on the cast kind of that shaped a lot of his fandom. Uh, so I figured Christian that you could uh, could drive the discussion here, since uh, I love it. driving discussions. Well, you got the keys. Yeah, so nice. There, All right, let's do it. Turn on the car. So yeah, mid two thousands was cool. I was a kid, which was nice. I liked being a kid. Sometimes. Anyway, it was the 20th anniversary-ish of Transformers, and we had a whole bunch of cool toy lines and media and comics and scandals and a movie. It was a busy time for us. But if we were sticking to... Oh, Dreamwave was a scandal. Oh, was it? It was. You you were busy trying to learn how to be an adult at the time. I was... I was a kid hanging out at the comic book shop, fully aware of what was happening at the time. It was cool. So what what happened with Dreamwave? What was the... Okay, so Dreamwave originally got the license to make Transformers comics. It was the first time Transformers comics had been made in a mass scale since Marvel had stopped publishing them in G2. Which was great. We had G1 Comics again. They did stuff for Armada, which was fun. They did an Energon book, which was good. They started The War Within, which was pre-Cybertron stuff, and everyone loved it all the time. That was like MicroMaster, which was super angsty at the exact right time for me to be angsty. Soft spot in my heart for that. But the bad thing about Dreamwave is that they stopped paying all of their artists and writers and employees, except for the people who own the company. Well, because they ran out of money. I mean, yeah, they, didn't <laughs> they, run out of money they mismanaged the... They mismanaged the business because they they were artists that didn't know what they were doing and you know. True. And then who was the first one to not get paid? Other artists. So, just shame. I I kind of wonder if you know something is going to happen like with IDW that will be similar to that, just because you know their financials are not fantastic and you know obviously they weren't they're not Dreamwave. It's like completely different, but. I, uh, you know, d- doesn't seem like that they're doing fantastic these days, but I don't know, we'll see. Well, I mean, IDW is dealing with the modern era, you know, the digital era of comics. Dreamwave was still like kind of banging when it when it started. Like that Transformers was number one, you know, a lot, like every month it, for a while. Yeah, it was like such a huge hit. It, it basically floated the whole company, and they had other comics going on. I can't remember a single one of them, but they had a few other, a few other like of other their own stories and stuff. Kind of like IDW does now, actually. Yeah, I think it was just they had so much success so quickly with that stuff. They just like had lightning in a bottle, and 
you know, they didn't have to hire accountants because there was always enough money in the bank account, no matter what they were doing. So, but when that goes south real quick, if you're not, you know, keeping a tab, keeping tabs on it, and then you run back to China with, uh, in your flying RX seven and never be seen again. The last thing I remember Pat Lee doing for tra- Pat Lee is, was the notorious owner of Dreamwave and, uh, worked for like, I think image comics. I shouldn't even speak about, it. I don't, I don't really know much about him, honestly, but, um, the last thing I remember him doing is he drew official art for a certificate that went in those very rare, uh, I think it's Anicon, like gift sets of the first movie premium line toys. It's like in a big purple box of the Decepticons yeah. and in a big red box of the Autobots. And there were like official um, like certificate of authenticity that had like Pat Lee drawings of the movie characters. Weird. I didn't yeah. know that. I knew about those boxes. I didn't know about his art on them. But it's in. It's a. It's a, You got to. You have to own them to to really know that. And I do not. But uh, I mean, I could be wrong. He's maybe done more stuff that from since then. But according, to, I wish Nick was on the podcast yeah. to talk about this because he would know all that dirt. I was gonna say Nick he could probably does know all the dirt. You know, talk about. Of course, I don't know how much. You know, yeah. Anyway, one of the cooler aspects of Dreamwave, though, at the time was because it was the 20th anniversary and the comics were so hot and the reissues were coming out. They started using the Dreamwave art on the American and and Japanese books, book box style uh, reissues, which was neat. It was good to see a lot of that art was pretty cool. A lot of it was weird, but a lot of it was cool. It hasn't aged well, but it was definitely awesome at the time because those drawing like like the. G1 box art is definitely a product of its time. You know, it's just, it's classic at this point, but there's some weird proportions and stuff in those, those illustrations. It was nice to see some modern, like fan centric takes on the characters in really, really good, really good art. Good call out there. I liked that. I mean, I I personally feel that Dreamwave had more of a, was like almost more important, but it's like kind of easily forgotten than the movies because the the success of those comics re-energized the brand in such a way that led to the films. I hadn't thought of it that way, but I think you're probably right. It depends how you slice it, really. But it, it primed everybody. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, I mean the, the Dreamway was cool. But there was so there was there was a lot of cool stuff going on with Transformers at the turn of the the century. I mean, you know, there was we're about to talk about the all other of it. not not a scandal, but it was like a weird online fandom thing. So one of our very favorite lines, masterpiece, started in what 2003, 2004 with MPO one, or as he was known here in America, 20th anniversary Optimus Prime. And along with that came the alternators, which are amazing, and I'll get to them more later. But a lot of folks seem really convinced that that Optimus and those alternators were the toys they had when they were kids in the 80s. They were not. But uh, you, you couldn't tell them otherwise. See, I could th- it, it, it seems crazy to, to say that now. You know, just like looking at those versus the original toys. Like, I think you could probably argue that if someone's looking at like one of the actual masterpiece figures, like I think you could kind of confuse it a little bit because it looked it looked more like the character but i mean i I don't know i guess guess maybe the optimist but those alternators are not do not look like the g1 toys well think about having watched the cartoon if you watch the cartoon a lot and but didn't like play with the toys as much your brain could totally have like a mandela effect where you know that optimus prime looks so much like the cartoon that you actually have like imprinted in your brain that you're like oh yeah that was my toy like you don't remember the weird clunky, you know, proportion G one Optimus that had you had to put the fists in that you lost all the time, you know. Right. <laughs> it, it's like cognitive dissonance there. So I do, and you know we're in it so much that we would never make that mistake. But uh, you can't you can't expect the rest of the world to be on the level. It's strange. But man, when that Prime hit, like it was on the cover oh. of magazines and stuff. Like it was huge. 
I still have copies of some of those magazines because, like, there's Transformers in the Barnes and Noble. That never has happened before. So I was picking up just stuff. I mean, Transformers was really underground at that time. Yeah. What did What did you What was your take on MPO One? Like the first time you saw it, were you like, "Oh, neat," or were you just like blown away that it existed, Christian? Somewhere in the middle. Like it was really awesome, and I did get it for. Uh, my birthday money with my birthday money uh, the year it came out here but it was just it was during it was before I had uh, resolved my tactile division team so I didn't really transform it very much and it just looked cool on my shelf which was great I was glad it looked cool but it didn't really fit with anything else I had at the time I still have them though yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was pretty amazing. Like, I ended up picking it up. Is the I think they did, what, a 25th anniversary, didn't they? Like, at Walmart with, like, the DVD? I think it was yeah. the movie 20th anniversary. Was it the movie? Was it the 20th anniversary still, or was it 20? I don't know. That would have been, I remember... 80, would have been 2006 instead of 2004, so yeah. Okay. And it was in, like, classics packaging. Yes. Yes, that but that was the one I got. But I think that they they clearanced it pretty hard, and like that's when I ended up getting it because I I can't remember how much I paid for that because I remember I think Skywarp I know was like crazy cheap too. But I swear I thought I got it for like thirty five bucks or something. But I may be completely off on that. I don't even I, remember what the twentieth anniversary one cost anymore. I don't remember. Like, how, where I pr- ordered MPO one from, but it was definitely imported from like an Asian store. And I had my, I was like, told my, my dad's like, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, this, I just want this. This is all I want. And he, you know, I told him like where to get it and I, I got it for Christmas. I can't believe I didn't get two. But like back then, back then, like, you know, I was, that was 2003. I was still in college. Like, I saw all the stuff coming out. For like car robots and whatnot, I would I would I would like furiously refresh BigBot.com to see any new images or anything from Japan, and um, I would you know, like the, the reissues just they kept coming out, and then they had the e-hobby stuff, and I was just like, how can anyone afford this? Like that's where I was. But I was like, there's no way I'm spending 120 dollars on a, a a reissue of like Ghost Starscream as cool as that is. Like that's just that's insane. <laughs> things have really changed so much well I, I felt the same way about mp05 whenever it came out that was the megatron right yeah, yeah. and i i remember i just, i thought it looked like the coolest thing ever and i still have never owned that that mold because at the time i was like man i really want it but like you have to order it like like you know i just can't run to walmart and go get it it's like i have to go it order it online 100 like, smackaroos yeah it's, it was a hundred dollars i was like who would ever spend a hundred dollars on a transformer <laughs> and you so, didn't you didn't know if you could even get it because it might get like confiscated at customs or something right yeah, that was a weird weird thing like in this time, this era, like the beginning of Masterpiece, the first like ten figures, like I remember, like those were life events when those got announced or when you ordered them or, like I remember where I was specifically, like when I was making orders for MP05 and stuff, and I had to do. I remember which website I went through, and it's, it's just like so crazy. And now it's just like, oh, just throw it on the pile. There's so I many MPs. Where I was when I saw MP03 for the first time. It was right after I had released. I was at BotCon 06, and someone had it in their BotCon lanyard walking around the convention. Dude, I saw that too. I was there. <sighs> <laughs> I yeah, I, remember, I went to the theater. Like I snuck in. I didn't have a Primus pass or anything. I just like snuck into the theater, and um, there was some dude there with one hanging around his lanyard, and I was just like, "Oh, you saw that I, guy. That I'm guy's here." I'm at my first real BotCon, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Memories. Memories. Yeah, my first one was in 2005. That was that was pretty crazy. But I was I still 13 like years old. Back in the day, like, know, I don't know, when, when uh, the new Megatron was revealed, I think we were at TFCon when it hit. Or I was, at least. I, I can't remember what year that was. 
Oh wow, you, you were going to see it. The what MP thirty six? Like he, I swear he dropped oh, like that one. when we were at TFCon. I don't remember. And it was like, I mean, that was a pretty big event too because you're just like, whoa, like, you know, they actually actually did it. And I mean, I don't know, like as great as MP05 looked back in the day, you know, I mean, that was like just miles ahead of it. I mean, just. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I've never gotten rid of the MP05. I, I just remember working super hard mowing extra lawn so I could get that hundred bucks to get him. I did the same thing a couple years prior to that to get Armada Unicron. Because mm-hmm. that was, you know, what, three years before that, four years before that. It's 50 bucks. How do you, how does a you know 10-year-old kid get 50 bucks? You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How? Like, that's insane. That that That's, like, back in the G1 days, I did a ton of work to get, a, I had, like, a special allowance, and it took me months to save up to get Fort Max. Wow. You but got that's Fort outside. Max when you were a kid? Yeah, but I busted my ass to get it. Like wow. it was, I think it took me three months. And we'd go to Toys R Us and I'd just look at it on the shelf and I'd just be like, yeah. You're gonna be mine. And then one day I counted all the money that I had saved up. And I was like, Oh my god, I have enough. And we like, ran off to the store and got it. It was great. Yeah. Um, but did that is not that did not happen in two thousand. It did not. My story no. did it. I you know, I just I worked for my parents, did extra chores and um did what I could to scrimp and save 50 bucks to get a Unicron. And then the hardest part was actually finding one. Like they were supposed to be released. And th- at this point in time is when I developed my dislike of calling stores to figure out if they have stuff. Because I would call the Walmart or the Target or whoever and be like, hey, do you have this figure? And, and you know, my mom would be like, just call and see if they have it so we could go. Because my mom hates going to Walmart. So I was like, do you have Unicron? Yes, we have him. Come get him. <laughs> they didn't have it. And I would call and be like, "Hey, do you have this thing?" It, it, it happened like twenty times, and they would always tell me, "Yes, we have it." They never ever had it, whatever I was looking for. <laughs> at Unicron, it happened at least ten times. They're like, "Yeah, come on down." Well, no. Was it like the same guy? And it's just like, "Yeah, we got it this time." They're like, "Yeah, last no. week you said you had it and you didn't have it." It was it's like, never "No, the same this guy. time it's real, Christian. Don't worry." It was never sp- the same person. I think I spent that that summer that was supposed to come out. I spent the whole summer trying to find that thing, and then when I finally did, there were two on the shelf, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm buying both of these." That was like, you know, that was like a hundred dollars dropped in a summer for a the, the most bizarre part for me of that unicorn thing. So I got mine finally. I did finally get it from the Walmart I've been calling, and then like a year later or a year and a half later, when he came out for Energon, like not only was he there. There was like a whole shelf full of him on the top row in the black color, in the yellow color, outside of the normal toy section. It was like a whole (laughs) unicron. (laughs) And I was just like, what the hell? (laughs) I didn't swear when I was a child, but yeah, it was so weird. So much effort to get one. And then a year later, there's like 40 of them. It's crazy. Well, did the Unicron that recently came out, like the HasLab one, did it kind of feel the same way? Because, I mean, that was uh, obviously a huge purchase for a lot of us. And, you know, it's it, it's one of those, it's, it's a lot of money. Like, you know, the $50 back then and then, you know, now it was $600 or whatever. It's kind of yeah. a similar thing where you're just like, should I be spending this much money on a, on a single piece? It's definitely accelerating. Like in ten years, they'll be they'll be releasing thousand dollar toys. Not like on the we regular, got, but there will be. We got that another too, the robot one now. The RoboSend one. I yeah, I would say that one kind of falls outside of the discussion we're having. Fair it's enough. like it's like its Fair own enough. sort of thing. But um, yeah, that that's another indicator, like to what I'm trying to say is like it just keeps leapfrogging, you know. True. When will it stop? When people stop paying for it. <laughs> like, that's when it will stop. Right, not... right. But it's one of those things where, you know, you release this thing that's like the pinnacle of of collecting or whatever it may be uh, for, for your collection. And you're just like sitting there going, you know, all right, like, am I this crazy to, to go ahead and do it? And then you're just like, all right, YOLO, like, you know, kind of. <laughs> Yeet. Well, you guys know that I grew up renting Transformers the movie from Blockbuster, so Unicron was a necessity for me when it 
I, I mean, I found out I found out about that one in a magazine too. Oddly enough, it's the same Walmart several months before. But I was walking through the magazine section, I was like, Unicron on the cover of a magazine. What the heck? Where am I finding toy magazines in general retail? That's a better question that I'll never answer. But uh, I saw it there, and I was like, I have to have this. And I, fa- I looked it up online, tried to figure out what the deal was, and I found it. It's amazing. I just don't think I was going anywhere else with that. But yeah, the anticipation for that was so different. And it's like $50. It was, you know, like you said, the pinnacle of engineering at the time. You know, everything else in our motto was cheap. I was collecting minicons because Pokemania was around and I was a kid and that's the money I could get. And then like $50 was the top of the line. And now I would spend $50 on toys like every other week for leaders. <laughs> Well, if you buy three deluxes, you're spending more than fifty bucks. You know? Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. That Unicron single pieces aren't a thing, or aren't as rare anymore. You know, you we brought up two like real big tent poles for this time period, and actually the front of it. You know, the MP MPO one and Unicron Armada Unicron came out kind of around the same two thousand two to two thousand three. You're like. Back then, I was like, this is as, as like kind of um, simple as the Armada toy line was. You know, those two things would have been enough for me to be like, this is the golden age of Transformers. You know, like I've said it like like with real sincerity, like five times since then, <laughs> including like this year. You know, so it's just so funny that these the brand does just keep outdoing itself it has some setbacks which i'm sure we'll get into but you bring up alternators that was one of my I, that was like the bee's knees to me you know like that's what got me i was like i'm getting those i'm gonna collect those i didn't understand that there were vinyl tech i was like right that was before i really understood like the angle of japan and like why it's cool to have that stuff versus the other stuff but i would collect the I collected all the alternators. I still have a complete alternators collection. Mint Me too. Box. I got on board a little bit later. Like by the time Optimus came around, it was on its way out. Yeah. And I was like, man, I really need to get the rest of these. But I was able to get them over the next couple of years. Not, not a big deal. I, I finished. Yeah, they're, they're not particularly tough to get. Some of the Japanese, the, some of the, the Biontech line is much yeah. more difficult to, to complete. Um, but I remember again, like, you know, the internet, the trans fandom was a lot different back then too. There were like websites dedicated to alternators rumors. I remember one website in particular. I, I can't remember. I remember what it looked like, but I couldn't tell you what it was. You know, there were just all these rumors of what the next few alternators might be. And then as we were getting to the end, you know, there was stuff like Black hey guys, Arachnia. I'm, I'm going to be right back. Okay. But there was like Black Arachnia, Megatron, which Aaron Archer has mentioned a few times that Aaron that That's he was supposed to be like yeah like a Cadillac or something. I remember Trailbreaker was a was one of them, and then you know when the Optimus Prime one was mentioned, it was funny because everyone thought like oh alternators and masterpiece they go together right we we don't need a Optimus Prime alternator that doesn't make sense because we have MPO one. It's like well. That's cute. Looking backwards, you know, like no, that was they were very different. <laughs> I mean, they did go together. The, the MPO four did. trailer accommodated alternators at a perfect size. So yeah, I mean, they they go together. Were there Takara Tomy like? Well, I guess at that point it was probably Takara um, without the Tomy. Like, were there actually like ad- advertising photos of alternators toys in that trailer? Or like M- you're talking about MPO4, yes. right? Yeah, I want to say yes, but I can't say that for sure. Anyway. I feel like I've seen it, but it might have been like a Sabertron.com photo exactly. shoot. Exactly. It's, it's hard to say. Just, your brain does get misty on some of those. I mean, it's been details. 18 years since then, so hard to say. Well, I don't know if you guys clicked that link I sent in the Facebook chat, but like you can kind of see year by year all the toy lines if you... I want to check. My phone. I can't click it and oh, say here. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, there's a whole. I could go and I could list some off for you. I mean, 
I was going to move on to Energon next because Energon was like a a landmark toy line in itself, at least for me. How, it was how really so? the first line that had a ton of G1 straight up homages in it. Like that was new. We got combiners again for the first time in forever, except robots in disguise, but those weren't scramble combiners. The Energon dudes were scramble style combiners. They were there. Omega Supreme came back. We had the Star Saber homage, which was crazy. I don't know. It was, it was a really fun line. The show is awful. The comic is pretty good. I, you know, I like the. That was where I first really paid attention to the J- Japanese releases being like wildly different than the. American ones because you had Super Link in Japan, which is like I call I consider that a, a sister toy line to Energon. Sure. And there were some really cool like releases. Like I wanted the Shock Blast from Super Link really bad because it had like slightly different deco and stuff. One day I will get that Shadowhawk Cosmo type, the blue dive bomb figure. Oh, yeah. One day. And well, I, I think Scorponok. That, that, that was the return of Scorponok was in that yeah. series, right? So that was like a big deal, too. It's like, oh, man, he was so cool in G1. But the one in, in Japan looked a lot better than the one in the United States. It was it like, it matter. actually kind of had different, the, but yeah. Yeah, I guess. So. I mean, it just it was quite a bit different. And then, like, of course, Galvatron and Megatron looked. Galvatron, yeah, Galvatron like, was great. Wheeljack came back, though he was you know, downshift. But it was still the Lancia transformation, which was pretty cool. And then I think that was the first time we'd ever had like true end of line syndrome with characters like Beachcomber being really hard to find or Quick Strike being really hard to find. Magnus was really hard to find. Magnus was impossible to find. Yeah, that was like I remember I saw some some dude at uh, TFCC 2003. Just he had one and he had no money, so he was just like trying to go to booths and like I would trade this. What would you trade me for this at your booth? <laughs> and they were all like, "Dude, no." So, so Christian, at I that also time, remember. Yeah. Like, were you going on eBay to try to find those, those harder to find figures, or no? Because it, I didn't really know about them. Hmm. Armada was cool in that it gave you the catalog in the pack, so you could see all the toys that were coming out. Uh-huh. Energon came with a similar deal but it didn't go into quite as much detail it's so, like i didn't know beach cobra and quick strike were a thing it was still not unusual to go to the toy store or go to walmart and target and see stuff i'd never seen before well and we have that experience now too so <laughs> we do have that experience now. <laughs> it's actually it's actually kind of reverted to how it used to be that's yeah. true except I, I I re- do- go ahead I do remember having a really big problem with the combiners and I've probably told this story before. I feel like I'm, you know, getting like Duran just retreading the same ground, but my mom got me parts of constructed con Maximus and superior Maximus for Christmas that year in 2004. But she had been going to the Walmart, the new, the brand new open Walmart, which is now very old in Charlotte. And she had been going there like every week on toy drop day to go pick up their remaining members, except the last two members of each combiner weren't released for another several months after the, you know, the first wave was like, it was a while. And I didn't pick them up until 2006 or 2007, even because they just, they just never showed up near me. I remember I had to, I ended up resorting to Kohl's and that's where I, and I, I got lucky and I found uh, was it Downshift and Towline? Who who was the like? Towline was the Skids Ironhide guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I found him at Kohl's. I was just like, oh my god! It was like a treasure. It was like a, it was amazing when I found those. And my, I remember I made a special trip, and my girlfriend at the time was like, "You suck," because <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. 
Uh, <laughs> toe line's fantastic. Yeah, His weapon has clear plastic problems, but toe line's a good toy. You're like, honey, I know you said we were going to go on this day tonight, but instead, let's go to Kohl's and uh, get me a toy. <laughs> uh, I really want to check out this Kohl's. Uh, you know, I got some ca- Kohl's cash. Uh, <laughs> like burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> This is another four one. And inner John is what really bridged me into be, being a kid into an actual collector. Mm-hmm. I started really collecting with Cybertron, which was in 2005, but to, inner John is that bridge time for me. Yeah. Like I started really paying attention to the releases, really paying attention to what was around. Also, what helped during that time was Universe One. Universe One was everywhere and then nowhere and then everywhere and then gone was that a target exclusive thing not always part of it was a lot of it was a walmart exclusive oh so they split it (laughs) no a lot of it was mass retail and then walmart picked up like 40 exclusives at once and killed their shelves and killed the line by doing that and then target picked up the last couple releases but that line was really cool because even to me, barely knowing about BotCon at the time, it felt like a whole line of BotCon repaints. Because like current molds or old molds, really molds from every line that had ever existed. And they were repainting these funky color schemes and they had this backstory where they got drawn from all the universes and Unicron was making them fight so he could absorb their essences and come back and be evil. And I had a Unicron toy that could do that. And it was It was cool. I really like Universe One. I like it a lot. And and, and what's funny is is at the time like Hasbro's probably like, all right, we've got all these toys. Like, how do we just throw all this crap together and try to package it in a way to sell to people? Some of it was interesting crap though, because a lot of the molds in Universe hadn't been released in the states prior to that time. I, I will grandfather in the Armada ish Dinobots. Uh, a lot of those were Beast Wars 2 and Neo molds that hadn't come here before. Uh, we got Big Convoy for the first time. Um, probably several others that I'm forgetting. A whole I mean, slew was... of Spy Changers, MicroMasters, six teams that hadn't been here before. Those came out. Mm-hmm. Was, uh, was that Big Convoy mold perhaps the first inkling of Nemesis Primal, which we've recently found out about? <laughs> I guess. Hopefully by the time this airs, we'll, we will have Nemesis Primal. That's yeah, actually that's true. But yeah, I think he was the second Nemesis Prime because Armada did it first, and then Universe did it. Yeah, yeah, actually, and you know, everyone did it. That was another thing that happened in Armada. We got we got Nemesis Prime. <laughs> now like a mainstay of all all toy lines. Uh, it was new then. He's always been there, guys. Don't don't worry. I mean, he's been there twenty years. Might as well, but. Yeah, true. He still th- seems like a you know like a like a throwaway thing they they made just yesterday. But you're right; it's been 20 years. <laughs> if you want to talk about another scandal, we want to talk about the SDCC 2005, whatever Alternators Nemesis Prime was. It was either Why? 2005 or 2006. Yeah, that was near the end of the line. Why was that a scandal? It was a scandal because for the first time you were going to be able to get a San Diego exclusive like online through a specialty retailer, not Hasbro Toy Shop. I think they did have some on Hasbro Toy Shop, but it was like a huge deal because the club store got Nemesis Prime. Oh, Fun Pub did? Fun Pub got it. Huh. I don't know how many they got, but that's where mine came from eventually. But uh, the site was all crashy all day because it was, you know, Fun Pub. But it did happen. I was there. Hmm. Early, early e-commerce blues. Even through the rest of the, the couple years after that, trying to get stuff on Hasbro Toy Shop, like spot. Oh man, it was horrible. I don't ever want to go back to that? It's like you think getting exclusives now or fan store stuff now is hard. Try to get you know San Diego Comic Con exclusive reissue blaster or sound wave and just. You'll never get it. Or Nemesis Prime, the classics one. You'll never get it. I don't remember having a huge pain getting any of that stuff, but maybe I just put it out of my brain. That's bad. You had to wait 
and wait. And they would tell you when it would go up and it would never go up at that time. Right. And, wait and keep refreshing and refresh and refresh. And it would take a little bit longer to refresh on like the eighth time you refreshed it. And be like, oh, is it time? Is it time? Is it ready to go? And no, it, it wouldn't. Or it would crash. <sighs> and but now see, we just order stuff on Pulse. Like Pulse it's just no used problem. to this type of thing though. So, you know, Mr. Gigawatt over there that <laughs> somehow it didn't you get some of those walmart gigawatts uh paul get one of those oh i well i got two orders to go through but they canceled them like like eight months later oh really <laughs> so oh, I, I never, I never got heard them. that conclusion yeah i i thought i was gonna get them and then they're just like oh we had to cancel your order because of stock or you know like whatever the walmart sends Amazing. you yeah so, that, that that was the closest to the old hasbro toy shop stuff that i'd ever seen yeah, that was a rough day. That was bad. That, that was like an all-day affair. That sucks. Happy, happy anniversary to that. Yeah. Like last week. Ugh. And like no one even cares anymore Like about Gigawatt. There's so many more shiny new things that have come out since right. then. It's like all this stuff is just like it has a 36-hour lifespan. Oh, that's 100%. It. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's it, man. It's so crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's where, like, back then in the 2000s, I mean, I don't know, everything seemed to take a little bit longer, you know? Like, releases were bigger events, I feel like, than now it's, mm-hmm. like you said, every week we get a new thing, and you're like, oh, hey, the next new shiny thing. Well, it's because they... Thing about... oh, sorry, they would, go. they would release more of less individual toys back then yeah so they weren't constantly trying to get repeat buyers to buy stuff it it was like let's we have these eight figures coming out in this half of the year we're gonna sell those and we're gonna sell a lot of them and and by the time we're done then we'll get the new stuff it's just like that would stick around long enough for you know a kid like me to save a couple bucks and go back and get it can't do that now there's no way. Yeah, like I remember being in college and I would go to the tar- once I got a car in college, I would like go to the Target and I saw Energon Scorponok at the the Target in my college town. And I was always like, "Oh man, it's like th- I think it was 30 bucks, 25 it bucks." Should have been 20 bucks or 25 bucks. It was well, I mean, it was it felt expensive. It felt like just on the cusp. I was like, "Do I This toy looks I don't like the way this Scorponok looks, but I kind of want to get it because it's Scorponok. And I swear I went back there for three months and looked at it and had the same conversation in my head. The same toy in the same spot that whole time. There is no way in hell you would have that much like, hmm, hmm, should I do it? Right. You have a you have a one and done chance these days. If my you friend. see it, you snap it up and you walk away quickly. Right. I feel like these days, if you, you just can't do it anymore. If you, uh, you know, snooze on a toy and then go back like later in the day, you're like, oh, gone. Depending on what it is. That's I mean, really different. That's I mean, really I, different I, I, I like kind of fast walk from the car to the toy aisle because I'm worried about those extra seconds I'm shaving off to get there before some Goomba that might be parking next to me. And I've. I've actually gotten stuff before someone because of that. I get there and I pick it up and they're like, oh, I didn't know you were going to go get that. I'm like, well, I thought you were, so fuck you. (laughs) Uh, Like, it's a real struggle, man. I wish it was like 2003 again. Yeah. I really did love Cybertron, though. I still do. I've recently made a decision to go and complete that line. Just it's it's my my kid line, my first collector line. It it just means a lot to me. And they're really well built toys. Like yeah. they're really tough, but they're not all of them are are unarticulated stuff like you know, Armada had. It's like there's pretty decent articulation in a lot of those. That had a, a line wide gimmick, but it wasn't always intrusive like the Minicon stuff was. It wasn't unobtrusive like the Energon star and weapon thing were but it also wasn't as intrusive as intrusive as the energon combining thing was so it was a nice balance i thought or maybe it's just yeah, I, I don't know i mean i think glasses. cybertron was just a really fun toy line it was kind of an al- alternative like you know roughly at the same time i think classics um Cl- classics know. was after cybertron was it 
Oh, it but was. it was around the same time period, though, right? Like, the, the end of Cybertron was... Like, I remember oh, yeah, those toys being on the shelf at the same time. But yeah, because yeah, they don't, they don't all... start... A, they don't start a new toy line before they finish the previous one, usually. So, but but yeah, they were there was a crossover time when they were both there. Yeah, maybe the it's just because, as Paul was saying, things sit on the shelf so long back then that like they still had it. But I just remember, you know, picking some of those up, and you know, the gimmick was just it was a lot of fun with the with the keys, the you know, the cyber keys and mm-hmm. whatnot. Uh, you know, with that line, and it was just it. Was, you know, and I also like the fact that, you know, they kind of try and do it now with like the different worlds and, and whatnot, like, you know, kind of like uh, back then. But I felt like that line pulled it off Cybertron better than first. what the new ones are doing. Oh, yeah. And they did it in the show, too. And that show, while not like amazing or anything, I think it's better than the War of Cybertron stuff we're getting now. And it was certainly better than Energon. Which everything's better than Energon, except for the Prime Wars trilogy. That was worse than Energon. But yeah, Cybertron was you know, fine. And I used to watch it. I would. That was the first time I had DVR, so I could actually like know what was coming because they would always change the time slot. And like, I can never figure out what Transformers was coming on. But I had DVR and could record it, and I watched it, and it was great. DVR. That's <laughs> a worthless technology from the past. That's funny. Now we just have streaming. You know. <laughs> uh, that's a good toy line to like kind of get your feet wet in like what you're saying it was great got like really one of the best optimus happy. primes of all time oh yeah i mean that is I really like the megatron too i mean it, it barely triple changes but it does triple change it's got a like way cool dragster mode which was new like megatron's never been a horrifying dragster before starscream being giant was really strange but you know what? i got that on a black friday deal and it was incredible that was cool because that was like your first Tetrajet Starscream is really what it was sort of evoking. So that was exciting. To and, see that. Like we mentioned earlier, War Within had been going on you know, shortly before that. So it was like, yeah. hey, there's War Within bits of this and there's Tetrajet things of this and here's this. He was great. It was bizarre how they released that giant one first. That was like a huge spoiler, wasn't it? Like If you were, uh, if you were yeah. watching the show. And we never got the standard sized one in the show colors here in America. Yeah, that was a, that, so that and the one, so that was the another one, we one got in Cybertron was a Kmart exclusive in weird colors. Like it was thrust. I mean, it was that's it who was basically it was. thrust. Yeah, they called a star screen, but it was really it came with a weird. normal colors Vector Prime. So if you'd already gotten Vector Prime, hey, you got two of them. Or if you're like me, you didn't get it because you already had Vector Prime. Well, that was one where I imported the star scream because it i was like I well will, it's apparently not coming out in the united states so that and it's so so funny thinking back because like these days that wouldn't happen you you would just right. be like oh that's definitely coming out in america i mean especially with the brand unity but even before that you'd be like they're definitely bringing this out that is one of those weird cases where hasbro must have been like oh kids aren't gonna want the small dinky version they're gonna want the big one so yep. That's what the we're going to release. Of that mold I had was the Shattered Glass Star Scream in Black on 08. But the, how much was the big one, though? If 50 bucks. 50 bucks. It was yeah, in the see, screen I mean, That just seems crazy to me, though. That, but you know, I didn't I mean, get it. A, like I said, I got it purchase. for Black Friday deal at Toys R Us that year. Right. And I had been like, I had, I had, I had some reason I had money in 2005 Black Friday. I don't know why I had money. I had some money. And I was able to get like Star Scream for like thirty bucks or something, and then we did the Walmart Black Friday deal, and I got the Leader Megatron with hard top attached for like twenty five bucks or something crazy like that. And I was like, "Yeah, best Black Friday ever!" And it was. This, this the way it went for me was, this was the first time I remember this ever happening. I had like seen online that someone had found them in stores, and I was like in my hometown, and I went to the Toys R Us. R.I.P. Uh, in 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 Iowa, I walked in and they had the entire line out on the shelf, and I was like, and I think I dropped like two hundred bucks, like just then and there. And I remember thinking, like, this is crazy, but I'm like, they're all here right now, and it's like day one, so I'm just gonna do it. And you know, then I did it. I did it that first time, and I was like, oh, it's fine. I do that all the time. Like, <laughs> no big deal. 
but you just never you, you just never see it like that like like all the size classes like ready to go that was crazy another thing that was really big during that time was you know, in cybertron in particular and then in the first movie line you would get a ton of toys of characters who were not in the show or in the movie like they were just toy only dudes and you don't see that terribly much anymore we've just gotten back to it recently with some of the battle masters and uh, the fossilizers are that way too modulators mm. but uh we used to get just tons of dudes who were not in any media they were just like hey we're here in the toy line what's up well, and we got new new characters too that were in the show yeah just don't do that kind of stuff. Anymore. I I wonder no, too if like of some of those. The six. I I wonder if some of those like should have made it into the show but just didn't. You know, like whenever they were doing it, that you know Hasbro's like here, here's all the different characters we have, and whoever's you know making the show decided to cut this, that, and whatever. I, I don't know. Baby. I don't know where you Paul, do you remember there being a, a super rumor that there was an actual toy of Signal Lancer that was only released in Japan? <laughs> do you remember that? I remember believing no. that hard for like a while. Oh. No. Cool. I was young. <laughs> no. Signal Lancer. If you don't know who Signal Lancer, he's the streetlight transformer, and he finally transforms at the end of Cybertron. Like at the on the in the last episode or something? Yeah, in the last episode, he transforms. And he's got, like, his own, like, transformation animation, right? It's, like, one of those, like... It's super! It's modified from Mudflat, but yeah. Oh, okay. That's cute. That's cute. That's yeah, I don't, I, I don't remember that. Too. No toy with the name Mudflap, except for the Human Alliance one from Riven to the Fallen, has ever sold well, and it started in 2005. <laughs> Fun fact. Fun fun fact. And it was movie time. We haven't even got to movie time. It was movie time in 2007. Movie time. We haven't even gotten to Kiss Players, man. Uh, we guess we gotta we gotta go through Kiss Players. Let's go through Kiss Players. Underappreciated classic, actually. No. Is That's it. it. I still want that Rodimus. If you're selling that Rodimus, if you if you can get past like. You know, it's like Black Mirror. If you can get past the first episode, then like you, you're in for a good a good treat. Kiss players. If you can get past the tongues and all that stuff, and the you know the girls, there's actually a lot going on in Kiss players that is it, it's part of G1. Like it's actually like integral to the Japanese plot. Unicron's in it. It's like some wild stuff that happens in there. Plus, there's some cool characters that have come out of it, like uh, uh, Glit. You know, the Shattered Glass yeah, Ravage. Can... And we've kept the auto troopers around since then. Yeah, auto troopers is cool. There's lots of other stuff too, but you know, I just I, was, I don't really want to talk about it. I just yeah, we don't need to delve you know. into it too much. But it was weird even then. Yeah, no one has ever. It will never be understood by ninety nine percent of people that come across it. So it's best to. Leave it alone. But right after that came Classics, Lucas's classics. favorite toy line. The C in Chug, the first letter <laughs> the of the C worst acronym, <laughs> horrible acronym of all time. You, you guys wow. love that acronym. I, I, I wow. really don't. I think it's just I really, gross. really despise it. But yeah, Classics happened. It was 2006. And they were first revealed on the Transformers Club website, which is where I got most of my news back then. Because No, it was at BotCon. Uh, it was at Bacon in uh, Kentucky. Yeah, but they showed it on the website first, and they took it to Bacon. That's how the timing worked out. I don't think so because the people in that room when they showed that shit were like, like the the temperature was changing in the room in in the panel room with every with every Prime image they showed first on the site. Oh, okay, I could be wrong, whatever. but yeah. First time I ever saw it was when Aaron Archer shows it on the screen at the thing, and everyone just starts flipping out like screaming and stuff it was awesome <laughs> it was awesome i was there too and then yeah and then they and then they gave well so if you were there and you saw it before that panel then they must have they must have done that because yeah. that was the first time i ever saw it but then they brought it out into the into the booth you know and you could actually see the toys 
just insane. And those it was insane. I love the packaging on those. That was just that was the beginning. The flap, love it. That was the beginning of where we are now. That was like the day the day that was revealed. Like there's still parts of classics. I mean, it, it really generations has spawned from it mm-hmm. right, like, as we know it today. It's the collector yeah, line. That, it's that would change the awesome. course of you know making new stuff into everything's an iteration of G one now. But and and that was really supposed to be kind of a filler line, wasn't it? Like in between, mm-hmm. you know, in between Cybertron and the movie, right? Three, two or three waves, two exclusives, get out, be done. Yeah, didn't work out that way. No, not, not not at all. So Classics has been on shelves ever since. But it's just funny how they that was when they finally realized like their brand had legs that they didn't know it had. You know, even though they had Botcon, even though they had like huge comic you know sales and all this stuff, they just that was the toy line that I think they realized like oh, the collectors are there. Like they're not just weirdos that buy this kid's stuff like this is stuff that they've wanted for years but i mean i would argue too that you know some of that stuff like you know it, you get people that aren't just collectors you, you get a lot of people that are like oh i remember when i had that as a kid you know you see it at walmart or whatever and you pick it up yeah and it wasn't the 60 dollar mpo one or however much he was right. at the time uh, you know optimus was 20 bucks here have a Jetfire yeah. finally looks cool and not like a Robotech. That was weird. Hot Rod's back. Bumblebee's back. Starscream was great. That, I, I thought the Mirage toy was still, I still think it's like the I best love Mirage. That Mirage toy. It, it has like so much articulation. It's just, it, it was like beyond its time. It was a step above most of the other deluxes in that, in that line. Absolutely. Could be its wave mate Grimlock, but even then, that Grimlock was great for them. Yeah, the Grimlock at the time was good. Well, the Grimlock was ballsy because they changed his transformation. You know, they're like, oh, it's a, this is the new, you know, his his mouth is his legs. You know, it still looked close enough to me. I, it's just so funny how the aesthetic back then was still like, yeah, it's the reminiscent of old, but it's new. Right. It's, you know, it's it's its own. It's it's not the same thing. You know, the Star Screen was probably the most the same of all those toys hot but, rod two probably but yeah 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 star Trek is the closest for sure yeah, that, yeah, that initial right. classic line megatron was, awesome. was a nerf gun which i thought it was, was really cool i still yeah. like that no I, I i still like that mold you know i mean it doesn't have the articulation and whatnot but i i don't know like you know I like Nerf and it's Nerf charming. guns, and I like, you know, so I thought it was kind of a neat, different take, you know, on, on the It was the one. first time Megatron had been a gun again, because he'd had he'd been tanks for the past several years, and we knew about the safety laws, and we'd had the problem with MPO5, and we had just kind of learned that they tried to reissue the G1 Megatron, but couldn't, so now Megatron is a gun, but also not really. Right. So. It was cool. But yeah, I mean, cool. the line too, like the choices that they made with the characters they released, you know, they pre- it's kind of like a greatest hits, you know, kind of thing with classics. So it's just it's just interesting. Go, yeah, I'm fine. It's just interesting that they wouldn't do that again. Like, look, think of that hot rod we got versus the one we just got. No you comparison, know? really. No, I mean, well, it's just like. They wouldn't have thought we wanted what we got now back then. They're like, oh, it needs to be modern. They don't want the old thing. They want a new old thing. It's like, no, 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 no. We want exactly what (laughs) the old thing is. (laughs) They couldn't have made that uh, Studio Series 86 hot rod back then. So, you know, it takes time. But, like, I don't think we'll get that. Like, Aaron, Aaron Archer was in charge back then. So that was, like, his brainchild. He was like, oh, let's... Let's flip it. Let, let's not just do what we used to do. Let's like make it new. Like Soundwave isn't a tape deck. He's a. Uh... Yeah, what was he? What did they even release him for? Doesn't come out. Yeah, he just didn't ever came out, right? 
they, they had well, the the they the released, they, at the time. It, it was like a Toys R Us exclusive. Um, yeah. That it was the G1 yeah. mold. Okay, okay, well, one time they've named Ravage something different as Ravage. Because that was the tape Battle Ravage. Oh, right. Well, like a scur- a Scourge is a good example. That he's not his bullshit like UFO or whatever he turns into. He was a stealth bomber. Which to me, like, hey, that makes sense. Like, that's cool. That's a good upgrade. And it looks close enough to the old one. But now we have Studio Six, Studio Series 86 Scourge, which again takes this, whatever came out in Classics or Universe, just like makes it almost look silly in retrospect. Like, why did you even bother doing that? Because we had never gotten the amazing actual thing we wanted. I yeah. mean, it was just different then. It was. I don't know. I, all- I don't know that you would appreciate the the same way. Like I, I appreciate that they had a, a new interesting take on on those guys. So if yeah. you wanted the same take, you could always gotten the titanium six inch one. That's true. That's that's which was I thought that Scourge was one of the best ones. Sure, of the sure. that's not saying much, but sure. Yeah. But that was why it was cool. Was weird, but yeah. A lot of people took that and said like this is my classics scourge that was when people started like you know there was only like seven or eight classics toys so already they were trying to fill in the gaps because you can't make 300 old transformers in one toy line yeah like my cybertron smokescreen was my g1 smokescreen for a while why not because it's not but But it was do whatever you want it was it didn't exist then right right there there was another option you you had to fudge a few things there paul well, so well like look what look what patience has brought. In, in universe. Yeah, it's so different now. Like you don't have to cobble it. Like if you look at the shattered glass line, which is you know 2008 and not really a line, they cobbled together nonsense from anything that was available at the time, and it was like here's shattered glass and here's some other guys you can repurpose as shattered glass dudes. And now like we're getting a dedicated shattered glass line, and that's just crazy to think. Yeah, like you said, is. that's what happens with patience. Years patience. and years and a decade of patience. 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 Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, cool. I remember building my first large-scale display. I was like, here's the new versions of G1 dudes. And I based it around classics and then the very first couple waves of the Universe 2 when that happened. And then uh, whoever else I had that looked like a G1 dude, like Energon Wingsaver was there and Cybertron Smokescreen was there. Well, yeah, and like in, re- in hindsight... You know, that would look like a really silly shelf now. <laughs> it would. But, but at, at the, the time, time, it didn't. Because it was know, all you got. Right. You, got. You, you're happy. You, you're happy to have that back then, Paul. I was happy. Yeah, you were. I mean, imagine seeing what you have behind you back then. Right. You literally would have turned into a bucket of goo and never been I heard from have. again. <laughs> Absolutely, I would have. Well... Let's talk about the next big moment for Transformers, which was Michael Bay's The Transformers in 2007. Do we really really want to talk about that? Yeah, we'll talk about it quickly. Or not quickly, whatever. It was a big deal. I mean, that changed the trajectory of of the franchise as well. Like, I mean, I, I don't know that it would be in the pop culture the same way it is now without those movies at all. Yeah. And it went in a way that I don't think anyone could have predicted, you know, like no one thought that movie would be like a billion dollar movie. However much it made crazy amount of money. I was pretty confident it was going to be the biggest movie like ever, you know, but that was maybe with rose colored glasses. I saw it (laughs) seven times or something in the theater. I don't know how I managed that, but probably that many times, five times at least. I wasn't shocked when it became a worldwide phenomenon, you know, because like to me, it always had been. It was like time for you guys to 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 wisen up. It just wasn't. They were getting wise on something I wasn't really like cool with. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, this is it, like, yeah, you should like Transformers, but no, not like that. <laughs> for me, it was different. I guess it's just when I grew up because I'd had Beast Wars and then I had R.I.D. And then Armada, Energon, Cybertron, like Transformers was always changing to me. So it was just another iteration of Transformers. It wasn't like a huge departure from anything else. I mean, it was, but it, was, it wasn't like a departure from the norm for it to be something different. I was never that concerned about it. 
what was concerning or I guess unconcerning is that uh, Transformers were cool suddenly. Whereas I'd been like keeping it a secret from people at school because I used to get teased for it. Oh. But I would say like I like Beast Wars and I like whatever you know, Transformers stuff and I have to get teased and you know, beat up on the playground for it. So I just didn't tell anybody for years. And then like suddenly Transformers were cool. And then I was like, hey, I've known about this for a while. And everyone's like, wow, what is all this about? And I would be able to tell them. High school was weird, man. But I, I feel like even now it's like that for me when, you know, people are like, oh, what's your hobby and all that? And I'm like, oh, I'm into Transformers. Like, oh, yeah, like I love those movies, you know. You know what? Good. I'm, I'm glad it's somewhat accessible to way more people now. I 100%. think it's net, net a good thing. The movies aren't great, but I think that they exist is pretty good. Yep. Yeah, it's like. It's like being a Radiohead fan and someone's like, yeah, I love Creep. You know, it's like, that's what, (laughs) isn't that, isn't that Creep song great? Which is, you know, like really old. So it's maybe not the perfect uh, allegory here. A couple couple of, you know, or, or all the people that say, oh, like the old Radiohead is the best and not, you know, the newer stuff that they've released 20 years later. Okay. Uh, We're, we're breaking the simile here. (laughs) <laughs> but you, you gotta get what I mean. It's like, it's like, uh, I thought you were on my level, but you're not. Yeah. But it's okay. It's still good. Like everyone can love creep. That's like what I sing at karaoke, anyways. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought that there were. I have memories. I don't know. We I've been sharing a lot, going down memory lane a lot. But like the release of that toy line, I was at a wedding in Nebraska, so I was I was in the wedding, and I had to. I went to Toys R Us before the wedding in my tuxedo to buy to see the to-, to see the the spectacle nice. and buy all the toys in my tuxedo no one even like bl- blinked they weren't like whoa what are you doing <laughs> like do you really like toys <laughs> but uh that that the toy line like uh, you know classics was like a good a good like level up for transformers but this was like a few levels beyond with the they really had to put the designing and our uh the creation of the actual toys um into overdrive to get these made and to make them anywhere close to what the movie was because the movie transformations was like nothing we'd ever seen before you know they turned into tinfoil not like a robot with a car on his chest so they yeah, they you know wild. we you know you, you see a big difference between the first movie toy line and the second one where like the second one, the stuff actually starts looking like much closer to what you saw on, on screen because they, they already had, you know, they had to work with previous stuff in the first movie. But I remember waiting for the street date for the movie toys for the first movie. Like I remember going to the store that day. It was like June, like June, something in the, in the teens before the movie came out on July 4th. And it was like a huge deal to go to the store that day and get them. Well, that was when it was Toys R Us. And so they, Transformers, had the first, the, the front four, foyer or whatever in the store. You know, that huge fr- front section. It was I crazy. Didn't, didn't go, mine was at Target, so it's like normal. <laughs> Oh, well, I went to both that morning in my tuxedo. Oh, look at you, Mr. Fancy Older Person with a Car. True. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I was 14. Did you get RoboVision Optimus? Heck yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get him that first time. I got Blackout and Barricade and... I don't remember who else the first time. But I, I did eventually go back and get RoboVision Optimus. Actually, no, I didn't get Blackout the first time. My, my Blackout was the one from Toys R Us that came with a Scorponok. The Deluxe Scorponok. I got that pack. Oh, yeah. yeah. God, there were so many releases back then. So many releases. Every, well, like, everyone had exclusives. It was crazy. Well, like, from the movie on, like... The amount of product, if you were like a completist of any sort, like you fell into a black hole that you no light can escape from your wallet anymore. Because it's been like 
they they pressed the make a lot of stuff button and it they never took the finger off it from then. <laughs> this is a talk to Nick, right? Yeah. It was a it was a big deal. I don't think anyone knew it was going to be such a big deal. Like around Christmas that year in 2007, there were like shortages of Transformers. Like you couldn't that was like around the time the 2008 concept Camaro Bumblebee was coming out and you couldn't get him. I, I remember going to a Toys R Us and someone had like they had just cracked a case and they had two of them there, two concept Camaros, and I got like front paged on Sabertron for that. So I was like, "Hey, look, it, this I got one." <laughs> and I, I couldn't have bought those fast enough because yeah, that was like the hottest toy of the season right then. Everything that had been hanging around from classics or even hanging around from Cybertron, anything that had Transformers on it in the toy aisle, gone gone that holiday it was it was surreal to see all of that where'd all those people go i know where'd they go well then we had animated we got animated and animated i think was the last true new thing that transformers has ever done maybe that means i'm old now but it was the last thing that wasn't just, hey, this is a new iteration of G1. You can make me an argument for Prime, and I might agree with you, but what animated about, was kind of it for me. What well, about the I mean, animated ID show, mean? though? Would you say, or, I mean, Rescue Bots, too. You know what? That hadn't occurred to me because they are kids' products. So, yeah, maybe. Okay, I'm just wrong. That's fine. What about <laughs> BotBots, bro? Please disregard Yeah, me. BotBots. You're fired. I'm fired. I mean, animated... Okay. I don't think there's ever been a Transformers series that isn't reiterative of G1. Right. It's the source material, you know? It's the first... Like, Armada... The Unicron trilogy is steeped in G1. It's just a new story and new characters. They just have a lot of the same yeah. names and archetypes. They're all from Cybertron. There's Autobots. There's Decepticons. There's Unicron. Well, sure, but not everyone is Optimus, Ratchet, Ironhide, Bumblebee, and Jazz, and Starscream, Megatron, and all of Seekers, and Soundwave. Like, it, 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 was, it wasn't like that. Pop-Bots. Then what was it like? I don't know. I just, I just don't get... That's a different argument for a different podcast, I think, but... Sure. Um, animated was great. I mean, that... That was where you first saw animated and prime. I lump them kind of together. They're very different, but I lump them together because that was where you saw the movie money like paying off with the stuff they pulled off with those. It was like, these are, this is a new paradigm of transformer. Yeah. The toys for animated are just incredible. Like I, I, I don't know that they're ever going to, quite recreate that i mean they just really like especially for the time i mean th those I toys we are have just it amazing now i think earth rise and kingdom do it now yeah. for g1 and beast wars but i think that's the only other example where something is so close to the so source material like that well i mean imagine if imagine if animated came out now like how amazing it would be even better than it was then like, I would it's love like, to see that. It's not like I want them to remake the animated figures, though. Like, how could you make them better? And, of course, I ask that question, and they'll find a way if they want. But they'll it's like, articulation. They're, they're pretty perfect the way they are. I would agree. I would agree. I just think that they could... They, we know, they know, the designers know so many more tricks now. Yeah. And right. they learned, they, you know, they create, they kind of, like, pioneered a lot of these tricks in animated that are now used um, quite a bit. And in Prime, yeah, you know, like all non-standard things. That was, yeah, it was such a change. Do you remember how much hate, though, when the first trailers and, and images came out, people were like, oh, this is terrible, Powerpuff Girls, or whatever. You know, how Transformers fans are. And then I remember well, when the... That the, was the start of that, you know? That, that, that was the start that, of that. that. It has never, it has never <laughs> ended. Right. I remember when the once the preview movie event thing happened, a lot of that evaporated because it was just so good. It was so well written. The animation was so good. Like the the quality on that show was just amazing. 
Voices the were the great. Toys was great. Yeah, I loved animated. I don't even understand. If anyone that says they don't like it, I'm like, you didn't watch it. That's why you don't like it. That time frame was like the beginning of always having three lines on the shelves because we had animated, universe classics, and uh, movie stuff. And mostly that formula has remained intact since then. There has been like the, the kids show airing, the classic line, and movie stuff line. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good assessment. You are correct, sir. There's extra stuff every now and then. You know, BotBots comes in, and then RescueBots came in and has remained more or less consistent since then. But, yeah. three Having three lines of Transformers on the shelf at one time was interesting. There was actually uh, more than that. Oh, yeah? we Transformers crossovers started in 2008. You're right. With Star right. Wars and Marvel. Big deal. You're right. And you, sometimes I would see those toys not in the Transformers section. They would be in the other in the toy line section, section. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. I don't know what teams made those, but it definitely wasn't like the A-listers at Takara Tomy. Like those were kind of. Not. There were, you know, I have seen some cool customs, though, out of some of those. Like, because I'm like, oh, man, what mold is that? I'm like, oh, that's like the Hulk tank or yeah. spider-man so like i skipped Game all that Man. stuff yeah i skipped all that stuff too i mean the but, star know, wars i don't know i i like the star wars ones i mean the vehicles were were spot on the the robots obviously were you know kind of weird but yeah they're all right i don't know i i liked them collecting the collecting three lines was proving difficult <laughs> for me with my first job but that was okay because you know deluxes were 10 bucks and a lot of times deluxes were seven bucks at walmart so you can go there and pick up pretty much anything you want for seven seven dollars you imagine no i cannot but i remember that was just so bizarre and animated wrapped up far far too soon and we got to revenge of the fallen coming in that's at the end of the decade. We were just, we were talking about you know mid two thousand stuff, and I guess we're kind of headed toward the end of the decade. But Revenge yeah. of the Fallen was next. Yeah, which we could probably uh, discuss that on another show. We don't, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, what have we missed from the mid two thousands era? Um. Well, we didn't talk about all the Japanese stuff, but like the crossovers. Crossovers is a big one. The Encore, I mean, we talked about reissues on yeah. TFYLP not, yeah, not long ago. Yeah, we talked about like, that pretty recently. Yeah, but like that's where uh, a whole new line of reissues came out based on the hype from the movie. They wanted to, you know, in Japan, they wanted to re, you know, make money off the old toys. We mentioned Titanium. Robot Heroes came out around this time. Music Label came out around this time. Uh the- Tommy merger happened around that time. Correct. Yeah, uh, I don't have a date on that, but like, there's some Beast Wars stuff that happened. The Beast like Wars Beast... anniversary stuff. Beast yeah. Wars tenth. Yeah, Beast Wars tenth anniversary. Beast Wars Reborn. Um, Telemoka. Hybrid style in Japan. Those were honestly, those I loved those. I lo- I wish that that was like master. It... Those were essentially masterpiece, but rebranded into like something. A little more like modely in a way, but I love those hybrid yeah. style toys. Even though there's only a few of them that came out, they were really. I feel like that. This is just me talking on my ass, but like that hybrid style Optimus Prime is what led to MP10, in my opinion. Like they they took tricks. They there's things that that toy did better than MP01, but it was at a different size, and they're like, we need to do this big, and that's what I think. You know. There's some analogs there. A tactics. We forgot to talk about good old the tactics. A tactics. Wow. Yeah. Robot masters. I like that line a lot. That's a Japan only. Um, Beast Wars Returns actually came out in the mid 2000s as well. Yeah, that was the finally getting released Beast Machines line in Japan. Yeah. Um, Built to Rule. Everyone's favorite. You know, le- pre-Creo Lego crap. Pre-Creo, whatever nonsense. Yeah. Uh, that's 
That's pretty much it, dog. We hit them all. Did I say Rebel Tech? Because like there there were some not Rebel say Rebel Tech. Tech but yeah, yeah, that did happen. Yeah. Most people don't consider that a Transformers line, but you know it's a, it's a bigger line that had lots of licenses and um, that was like those were non-transforming Transformers. So there was talk about those at the time. Did I mention music label? Yeah, you did. You did mention music label. I did. Okay. And, and sports label. label. I'll throw sports those in there label. Too. Sports label. Ooh. The shoes. Those are actually really valuable now. I'm sure they are. Yeah, that's it. I mean, just rattling off a bunch of toy lines people probably remember or forgot. So, Alternative. Is, alternative. Forgot about that one, too. Which is If anyone out there is selling in a Tactics Landquake, hit me up. That'd be my first of tactics figure. Kind There's of a lot of fish in the sea, Christian. I, I like Landquake. He's a cool dude. Only other major thing I can think of that, that we haven't specifically mentioned was that in 2005, the BotCon license went over to FunPub and that changed the fan club landscape for a really long time. Yeah, it's timelines, right? They, they, yeah, timelines. They, they uh, the number of BotCon figures went way up from two to like a dozen and then like more. And there were also club toys that you had to buy and you got a subscription figure every year and they built a combiner over the first five years, which took forever then. Now it doesn't yeah. seem like such a big deal. And it's uh, it's uh, it was named after a sex toy. It was unfortunate. Because they did not. Under, do you know? Did you know that one, Lucas? You want to talk about controversy? No, no, that, I didn't was, actually. that was a scandal. It's called, it was oh. called Nex. The combined figure was called Nexus Maximus. Why was it called that? Though, do you remember? Because it was the Nexus of the. I don't. Because that all the it's Energon a, combiners were something Maximus, and he was right, like from the. Even though they all converged, that, we knew a long time that that character was going to be one of the thirteen. Oh. But Hasbro didn't want a licensee to use the name Prime. Mm-hmm. That was the deal. So he wasn't <laughs> going to be Nexus Prime. He was Nexus Maximus. And then so, um, we found out what, Paul? Well, you know, a quick... You're like, oh, Nexus Maximus. I, I wonder if anyone's selling it. I might put that in Google. Well, guess what? The top... This is, where, this is why SEO is something you got to pay attention to, folks. The first... Uh, hit for Nexus Maximus was a giant translucent dildo. Sex toy. It was the Nexus Maximus, the ultimate level of pleasure. There you go. So it was clear, just like the toy. <laughs> it's true. I, I don't know. But it, they then they had then they changed it to, to Nexus they Prime. They changed it to Nexus Prime <laughs> immediately after that. Like the same day. Uh, it, the, the copy for the instructions didn't change or anything, but he was ever since known as Nexus Prime. That's funny. So, branding 101, folks. There, there you <laughs> go. Got to Google that first. Without say search. That was the downfall of Hasbro copywriting that day. They needed an expert like you. Yeah. They just didn't know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that, there was a lot of weird stuff with Fun Pub, but uh, a lot of good stuff too. That that's probably its own episode later too. But yeah, it, yeah. it was a big deal for it to switch over, and the the conventions became less underground and more corporate, which was cool and not cool and cool at the same time. I think it was cool. Yeah. I think it was cool too. Two thousand five was my first one. I like I I prefer professionalism to uh, scrappy Bye. dappy do. I agree. <laughs> Not everyone agrees with us, but I agree with that. Uh, that's cool. I, I like it when people don't agree with me. <laughs> so, Lucas, I mean, I know you've been into Transformers for a while, but when you hear some of these stories, like, are they fun to hear? Are you? Do you know that they're coming, or do you like? Are you learning? Do you learn stuff when we have this banter back and forth? Oh no! I mean, some of the stuff, like you know, I didn't go to the BotCon stuff, so I mean, that's always interesting and whatnot uh, as well. So. Um, you know, with the movie toys for me, you know, I started my, my relationship of buying a bunch of movie toys and then going, what the hell am I doing with my life and selling them all or giving them away or whatever. So yeah, that was my, my experience mainly with, 
or has always been my experience with movie toys, you know, where they, they do not stay long in my collection just because that's not, it's not the core of, of what I personally collect. Um, but then, you know, obviously when you see all this transformer stuff on your shelf, on the shelves, like at, you know, Toys R Us or Walmart or wherever, you know, you're like, Oh, Hey, it's a new transformers toy. I want to go check it out. So you do and, and all that. But, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, back then I was not in, you know, in the fandom the same way that, uh, that you guys were. So it's always interesting to hear these kind of stories. Well, I, I, I just wonder like if the viewer knows about Nexus Maximus, for instance, if that's like, Ooh, I learned that on the TFYLP podcast. Well, right. I mean, it's still documented on TF wiki, but is everyone just like reading random pages of TF wiki all the time. Right. I knew about the combiner just because like, I, I think I've actually picked up some of those pieces just over the, over the years, but I didn't know the story about Nexus Maximus though. More, you know, so there you go. Could have, yeah, could have been a KISS day, player's toy. The day it was announced, um, the top search results stopped being that the dildo, but uh, <laughs> the, first, the, da- the damage was done. <laughs> the damage was done. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> all, the, all the nerds pushed that down. So, yeah, it was I still. they made some sales, there. too. I bet they did. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, that was, that was cool. I mean, it, Paul, it was cool to learn that you saw the same MP3 for the first time that I did. That's pretty cool. It is, yeah. What a you, random thing. Did you go to the, the theater to watch the film? No, not that year. Oh, man, I was so excited to see that. Like, in, I had ne- I don't think I'd ever seen it in the theater. And it, Transformers, the movie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I left, I left work and drove down there from Chicago and had no idea how to do BotCon. I was just like, do you just show up? Do you got to pay? What do you do? And I knew where the theater was and just walked into the theater and they were and like bought some popcorn and walked in and like no one was checking badges or anything. And like they showed it and I was just loving it. It was cool. And then I went to the show and got my, um, uh, whatever I, I paid to get in and and but I didn't have like a pre prepaid pass or anything. I had no idea how any of that worked. But but yeah, I had to drive all the way from Chicago and I got there just before it started and got in wow. there like just like drove right up to the freaking theater and like ran in and like I didn't didn't know anyone. I was just there. It was a whole new world. School was my second show, but yeah. It was still really cool. That's that's cool. my dad and I drove drove to Le- it was in Lexington, Kentucky. My dad and I drove there from Charlotte over the mountains. Long drive, which were probably just as long for you. It's crazy to think like I probably now know like fifty to a hundred people that were in that room. That I yeah, at that time I didn't know about either. I was a child, so I wasn't really super <laughs> involved. Yeah, crazy. This thing's changed so much it's just, um, how did you even find out about the show then paul like if you didn't know how it oh, ran and oh, all that like okay was, i knew what botcon was okay sure. like let, let's let's like let's take it a step back i just had never been to one and hmm. i had oh I, I guess i went to oftcc in 2003 because i happened to be in chicago for a job interview and on and i realized that and so on the way out I knew I realized, hey, I can drive on the way back to Iowa. I can go to this convention center out here and I can go to this show. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I walked the sales floor there, but I didn't really like go to that. one. Right. Um, I was there for maybe like two hours, you know, and. So I knew about it for I'd known about it forever, but I'd never had like the gusto to like go like it never thought yeah. to me. I was like, oh, that's just something cool that. That people do, but not me. I don't go to that. Not like I didn't want to. I was just like, I don't know how, you know, like yeah. I never had someone to go with or anything. And so it was on my birthday and I wanted to see the movie, the restored movie in the theater. So I went to that, you know, like it was, on. it, was, it just was a trip. Yeah. So, but yeah, I had no idea. I knew people had badges. I like actually tried to make like a fake badge. Because I, I, I worked in graphic design, 
or the design department at a record label at the time. And the morning I left was Friday morning. So people had already been there the night before. And I was seeing photos on Sabertron.com and I saw people with badges and I was like trying to like make a facsimile badge. <laughs> it was so bad. Like I'm, wow. I, I'm outing, I'm outing myself as a real skis bag. It's just, I just didn't understand how it worked uh-huh. and I wanted to be able to get into stuff. And it seemed very expensive at the time. Like I didn't think it was worth it. Now I understand it all. So I have bought I mean, very expensive. It, it was expensive. And I didn't really want any of the toys, so like the death it was Death Saurus, the Death Saurus timeline set, right? No, it was the pre Beast Wars set in two thousand six. <laughs> well, I should have bought that one. <laughs> but in fact, I later sold those toys for a down payment on a car. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what I did want? I wanted Megatron and Waspinator. And they sold out at the show. They did. Yeah, so that you know that was kind of new, all new to me. Yeah, it was a year before with the Death Source set, and that did not yes. sell. Out. It did not sell out. They they finally got rid of them all in two thousand eight, when they sold out of Shadow Glass. They sold two thousand five sets. But yeah, I held on to the pre Beast Wars stuff for ten years, and I sold it to put a down payment on a car. That that's awesome. You know that's. Yeah. The- that's amazing. You know, that's like the power of Transformers. And we didn't really, we did mention the Fun Pub stuff, but like it really took off. You know, like the so, the seeds they sowed back then, like made the Botcon toys like really something you had to have. Like if you were a hardcore collector, you had to have some of that stuff. Oh, yeah. Like the 2007 set was j- like broke the fandom for a, a good a five years. Time. Three just, years. Just broke them. We we got we got a retail Thundercracker in 2010, but yeah, for three years, broken. It was great. <laughs> it was awesome. All the time. All right, that's it, but it, I love yeah. I loved all this. I love this era. You know, yeah. I love every era. All right. It felt like everything was so charged, like positively charged. Right. There were negative elements and people yelling about stuff, but like everything was new and exciting then whereas now you know we, we see stuff we get exclusive like oh yeah that's cool and then we move on to the next thing but back then it was like wow everything's new right right and, and back then like we, we didn't have all the history that we do i mean there was history but it, it's just not the same so right yeah things that have become commonplace were like trailblazed right. in this right. period of time. Right. We're still feeling the reverberate. The gravity waves are still emanating from this time period. So, all right. Well, thanks guys for joining me tonight. Um, it was a lot of fun uh, discussing this stuff. So, um, thanks for letting us go down memory lane. Yeah. 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 I usually ha- I hate memory lane on podcasts, but you know that seemed like the proper topic. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was nice. So anyway, but uh, but thank you guys. Uh, thanks to everyone, and um, yeah, th- we'll see. I'm not sure there should be some microcasters potentially while I'm out on vacation as well. We'll see what happens, but I I don't know. But uh, but yeah, so. But uh, but yeah, thanks thanks everyone, and uh, we'll we'll see you.